Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at how to create a 360 image in ThingLink. So what you see on the screen right now, this is a sample 360 image. This is actually my old classroom back in the high school I worked at. Um, whenever you take a 360 image, it is going to end up looking like this. It's just basically that 360 image uh, flattened out. Um, I, I happen to use a 360 camera to take that picture, but I know that there are several apps out that let you do the exact same thing. You just have to take several pictures in order to build that same image. But I went with the actual 360 camera just because I wanted something high quality. So let's go ahead and look at the website. So once you get into uh, ThingLink, you do have to be a premium teacher, so you do have to bump up to the premium account. Um, you know, normal normal price for a teacher is you know kind of pricey, but they do run specials. Uh, right now they have it half price if you go into the breakout edu so um, just look into it it does have it on the website like as far as what the uh, little coupon code is but if you can't find it just send me a message and i can definitely get that for you um, okay so let's go ahead and go to upload the image so we're just going to say upload panoramic image 360. we'll just choose it so here is my image of 360. We'll say choose and then it loads it in so it takes that flat image and it makes it into a 360 picture. So here it comes in. Okay, so you can just use the mouse to kind of drag around. You have images all the way around and on top and bottom. So the way this works is you're just going to click on the add tag button to add in buttons that are clickable in order to interact with your users. So we'll click the button. So you have four options as far as what you can do. You can do image video, embed, and transition. So image just lets you basically drop in an image in there. So let me show you what that looks like. So we'll say upload image. And I'm just going to pick one. So we'll just say like this. We'll say choose and then it uploads in. Now the one issue that I have with this is it loads it in but it uses a specific set of parameters that you know it's I, I haven't figured it out yet to figure what works great for it but it cuts off like top and bottom left and right so no matter how I've done it you know doing the upload image it's always cut off something now on the computer version you know you can see a lot more just because I guess the screens a little bit bigger but whenever you play this on a phone or a tablet it's gonna cut off even more and then as you turn from landscape mode to portrait mode on your phone it is gonna change the orientation of the picture as well so you're never quite sure exactly what you're gonna get so I don't recommend just uploading the image directly unless you don't care if stuff gets cut off. Like if you're just trying to give it a general idea in the background, then that's fine. Then you can put it in there. So let's just say that you just wanted it like this. You weren't really caring about showing everything. I can add in a description. So I can say description right here. And then it adds it here at the bottom. So I know a couple times I've just used the image in the background as a placeholder. And then my actual clue or whatever I was doing for that particular breakout was down here at the bottom. So it just said you know whatever that clue was so that's one way you can do it um, another thing that you can edit over here is by clicking this little button here it's gonna default to use whatever image you uploaded but I can click that and change it to something else if I want to so I can say choose and then now the image that's gonna be on the screen is this new image so if I hit save it shows that new little image rather than the one that I uploaded a while ago so that's one way now again I don't really like to use that way just because it cuts stuff off so we're gonna go another route. So the other way you can do it is using Google Drive. Now I've seen different, you know, like people posting ideas on how to upload in there, and you can upload Google Docs directly into this, but again, it gets into that realm of cutting things off and squishing things together. So we're gonna kinda get tricky with it and use a little back-end trick that I figured out. So we're gonna go to Add Tag, so we'll just move it over a little bit. I'm gonna say Add Tag. And instead of going to image, I'm going to go to embed. So we're just going to embed the, the image directly. So we're going to do a little bit different. So the way that this works is we're going to need the embed code. So there's a little trick to get the embed code from an image on Google Drive. So we're going to switch over to Google Drive. And these are my files from the breakout EDU that I'm doing. So we'll just say that we're going to do this image right here. This one's a, a GIF, but again, it's just an image, so I can double click it so you can see what it looks like. So here's the image that I want to put. Now, if I just upload it directly, yes, it's going to cut stuff off, so we're going to fix that. So over here on the right, you're going to see these three little buttons as a drop down. 
So I'm going to drop down and over here I don't have any options that allows me to embed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click open a new window. So once you click open a new window, you see the exact same thing. Now you might wonder why did I do that? Well, the reason I did that was because now when I click the three little buttons, I have new options. I now have embed item. So now I can come and copy this and we're going to embed this little widget into my breakout session. So now here under embed code, we're going to paste that in and then now I have my entire image. So I don't have to worry about stuff stretching, stuff looking different, you know, me missing anything because if this was bigger than the screen, it would have scroll bars down here at the bottom and the top. So that way I can actually see the entire thing. For some reason, this is the only way that it'll actually work that way. So this is kind of like my back way into doing it. So we'll go ahead and save and then that's good to go. Now the reason it's clear right now is because I didn't click an image here as my background image for that little circle. So again, you can come in here and throw in whatever you want to, like I can pick that one and then have it there. So we're gonna save. So that's there. So that's one way to do it. Another thing that you may want to embed in the background is let's say a document, like let's say a Microsoft Word document. So let's go in and do the same thing. Now again, if you just go to upload image, like let's say you have a PDF of it or something or just a screenshot, it is going to cut it off. So I don't recommend using upload image. Now, uh, one thing that you can do is you can upload or embed the Google Doc directly in there. But again, I don't d recommend it because it will squish things together and you're going to lose data. And like, especially if you're doing graphs, if you're a math teacher, you're going to get stuff squished together and it's not going to look right. So I don't recommend using Google Docs as the embed. What I do instead is I take that Google Doc. So let's say, let's close this out. Um, let's say that I wanted to use this little breakout EDU links. Like this is just a straight Google Docs that I typed into. Again, if I embed this in directly, it's going to cut it off. I think it was right about here is where it squished it all together, which in this case wouldn't be bad. But if I had images, it'd mess everything up. So what I did instead was I came over here to my Google Doc and I said file and I went to download as, and then download it as a PDF document. So that way I just get a straight PDF of what my Google Doc was. So after you do that, then you can upload it back into your uh, Google Drive. And then from there, then you can take that document and then you can embed it in. So the way this the, the PDFs looks like, like it doesn't matter which PDF we pick. Let's say we pick this one, this is a nice worksheet. Um, this is just like the image that we did a second ago. If you click the three little dots at the top right, you don't have the embed option, but if you open it a new window, you do have that option come up. So we'll go ahead and go to embed, we'll copy it, and we'll paste it here into our embed code. So here you see it pop up, and again, this is bigger than the screen that's there but it is scrollable now. And this will look the exact same way on your phone, on your tablet, computer, whatever you're looking at it on. So this is definitely the way that I recommend going in. So we'll hit save. Again, it didn't have the little image there because I didn't put one, but we'll just leave it like that for right now. Some people just leave these blank, so that way it makes it a little bit harder to see them. So you can make it kind of like an adventure where they're trying to find it, but that's up to you. Okay, now adding in a video before you had the option to add in a mp4 or an m4v it had to be a relatively small video like real short because it had a limit as far as the size goes but recently in the last couple of days they've had some issues with the up actual uploading so pretty much at this point right now there's no way to really upload it in without it giving you some kind of an error so i'm going to skip that part for right now but just know that the video should be small and short in order to go in unless they change that. And that's for a reason. And that's just because they don't want um, your users, like let's say if they're using it on their phone, which is ideal, we don't want them sitting there and waiting for them to download that video in order for it to stream directly onto their phone. So uh, videos we'll just kind of skip for right now. Um, they didn't set it up so that way you can you know, link to a YouTube page like you could on just the regular images. Um, the reason is, is they wanted you to stay within that 360 image. They didn't want you to jump from screen to screen and have to go back into it and reload it and things like that. So, uh, yeah, you are going to have to keep everything in-house on this 360 video. 
So that covers the first three. We have image, video, and embed. So we kind of went over all three of those. The last option is transition. And what this is, is it'll transition into another 360 scene. So let's say that, you know, you had one image, you had a couple little, you know, pictures and slides and things that come up on there. And then you wanted to jump to another one and another one, another one. Basically, you just use that option to jump over to that other 360 video. This is the only way that you can actually leave this 360 image in order to get to something else. So this is pretty much the only option that we have at the moment. Um, if you are looking to link to websites, link to pictures, link to YouTube videos, things like that, then you are going to have to use just the regular, you know, image editor, which is, you know, still, still pretty good. Um, it still has all the same options you can add in pictures, you can add in videos. That one has a lot more things kind of built into it just because it's been around longer. This 360 and VR editor is relatively new, so they're still adding everything to the website. So I'm sure in the future they will have all the same options, but for right now this is kind of all we have. So as things pop up and as I use it more and more, I will update the videos, add in more things, you know, hopefully there's easier ways to use this so we don't have to keep using our little tricks in order to embed in images and documents. But for now, feel free to use this. If you have any questions, feel free to email me or send me a message. Um, other than that, I guess we'll just wait till the next video.